Just quickly, I wanted to show another way of adding colour to the beads. Um, I did make a video yesterday, but it was so strange with the sun. I think the sun must have been shining straight through the window, so everything looked like a sort of Andy Warhol print, which is great if that's what I wanted to do, but it wasn't. Okay, so I made quite large beads by wrapping lots and lots of the plasticky film from the inside of the puppy pea liners and then adding this um, iridescent tissue in layers and heat shrinking it with a heat gun, just adding up and adding up, making an enormous kind of cocoon there just to see how far I could take it. What I think I might do now is change the shapes entirely and make some, you know, much more sort of rounded ones as well, flattened ones, um, sort of more egg-shaped egg ones. It might be possible to put them into a mould and press them. I don't know, we'll have to experiment and see. Anyhow, what I was doing here was adding colour and what I wanted to do is give them an opalescent look. So opals come in all sorts of different um, types of coloration depending on where in the world they're found and, and what their processes in the chemistry underground has been. So this is the black, the only black I could find in my studio yesterday for some reason was this one. It's a kind of PVA thing made by a company called, I think Stickers, no Ranger. Anyhow, it's got little bits of glittery stuff in and um, I'm not a huge fond of glitter but in in subtle ways I think it can add a sort of a sort of shift of mystery without being too obvious. This has got tiny bits of beautiful bluey turquoisey gold and green in, and, and tiny flashes of gold which will be hardly discernible. However, so I started to paint it on yesterday and then said what I would do is I, I'd paint on more. It really it isn't painting because you can't paint this particularly because the plastic resists but you can build up the layers as it's in a glue um, I was going to say matrix, is that the right word? Sounds very 21st century. Anyhow, there I go. Added lots more black. I'm going to leave that to dry. The other one I did um, was used Prussian Blue, Dale Rowney. Um, they do this lovely water resistant um, pigmented acrylic ink. And I find it um, so much different to using acrylic paint because acrylic paint can peel off like a layer of skin whereas this has a habit of soaking in. I suppose if you were to water down the acrylic paint, you would get a different um, way of working with it. But this is what I've worked with for years and I'm just really used to it and I love it. So here we go. So I did some yesterday on just putting the, do you know what? That looks a completely different color when I look into the um, viewfinder on the laptop. And I must remember not to stop jumping up and down on the desk and shaking everything. So I was just going to add more colour into there. So you've got dark and non and slightly transparent. Let that dry and again because it had um, a nice magenta in I was using um, these, they're transparent watercolours, they're concentrated. Some of the colours are fugitive which means over time they will fade with the effect of sunlight and they may a little but the thing is, they, they, I found that they, they fade so slowly and so dis, indis, indiscernibly. Really, this is ridiculous. English is meant to be my major thing. Anyhow, um, you just don't notice it because you adjust. But like watching your children grow up, you just really don't notice. So, there you go. So I just add more of this on. And because it tends to only stick in certain places and not on the film so much, so I can just deepen the colour. And that's it really. What I did was I made quite a lot of um, different shapes and I've got sort of enormous ones and medium sized ones and tiny, tiny little ones which will just act as spacers and then these ones which are the very long ones which are going to be made into um, longer spacers or earrings. So the idea is I'm going to make some sort of, um, I'll just get covered in pink ink, um, kind of Downton Abbey, that's the film that's currently doing the rounds here on Sunday nights, and most of us love it anyhow, I do, and the fashion is extraordinary, the dresses and 
the necklaces particularly because it's 1920s, that period between the First and the Second World War. And so there's a whole sort of influence of um, bohemian fashion. Started off with gypsies, had a huge effect on fashion in Paris in, in the 80, end of the 1800s. And it keeps getting picked up and picked up. I think it's called boho now. And it, it often just relates straight back to gypsies, but sometimes it goes into the sort of art and beau, art deco look, which is where I'm going. And I've been making more beads. And my intention is to have a whole selection of different shapes and sizes, lots and lots and lots of tiny ones, and to use Japanese glass beads in between as well. And so I want to make something that goes around the neckline, which has a sort of feature of the larger beads there, and then linking in with it from the back, so it only has one fastening. It comes down and goes right down, maybe another one halfway down. Um, oh, there's just endless, endless designs. And if you want to have a look at my page on Pinterest, I've been putting up loads and loads of contemporary jewellery and lots and lots of um, state jewellery, crown jewels, ancient jewellery, you know, old tribal jewellery, everything. Um, because it's just a real wealth of inspiration for ideas, for shapes, designs, colour combinations. And just let the imagination fly, really. It's pretty great, actually. I just wanted to see this I just bought. I bought this in a junk shop in Greenwich a couple of weeks ago. It was about 20p or something. And it's made of a, of a base metal. On the back it's just a, a bar with a circle and on top of that has been spot soldered um, a, a disc which has been cut out into one, two, three, four, five petals and then scored from the back so that you have little raised areas where it would appear the stamens were a sort of indication of that and then it's had a little bit of bling with diamonds stuck in and I'm thinking you know you can combine um, all sorts of mixed media now to make beautiful things and I'm not particularly keen on FIMO I have to say it's a little bit too long winded long process for my kind of more spontaneous way of wanting to do things. Um, but it is possible to combine FIMO with paper clay and and the iridescent tissue and all sorts of additional things as well, found objects. So maybe in the winter I'll start to do some more tutorials where I experiment more with the FIMO and I will probably do it from a completely off the wall direction because having not been taught, um, I've not been taught anything. I have taught myself everything and that's the way I prefer to do it actually. Although I must say I do look at lots of tutorials on YouTube and love the YouTube community and think it's a wonderful medium and it can only get better and I'm dying to see what it looks like in five years time because social media is just great fun as far as I'm concerned. In the days we'd had scrapbooks we now have Pinterest. We used to take photographs and now we have YouTube. I mean, anyone can make their own TV channel. It's exciting. So I'll get back to you. Toodaloo.